people overlook the prairies 100%. I think that, that if I can make the blanket statement, I think that that is 100% true for the average Canadian. People overlook the prairies because it's the prairies. Less glitz, less glam. We don't have as many voices. We get overlooked a little bit because of like the harsh weather that we're associated with. I feel like that's slowly changing. There's so much more to the prairies than just our Eastern European influences that we have, but more than just pierogies and, and borscht and braised root vegetables. I do think the prairies have a, a very bright future when it comes to the food world and the culinary scene, especially the culinary scene in Canada. People going out, coming back, and, and doing their own things and bringing those talents and making local restaurants that are just doing really awesome, really cool things. And I think uh, Christy Peters is the perfect example of that. The rest of the world doesn't really know what goes on in Saskatoon, and I don't think we even have discovered half of the ingredients that are available right in Saskatchewan. We've been drying and curing and fermenting and canning and freezing just to make sure that what we bring in from the gardens can last us all winter long. Some of my favorite ingredients to work with in Saskatchewan are the berries. There's a huge variety of berries that are always newly being discovered. The prairies and our environment really affects my approach to cooking. I'm really trying to understand the seasons of the prairies and our landlocked kind of climate forces us to be very creative with the short growing seasons. It's very cold all winter and as soon as the first things pop up in spring, I like to start using those on the menu. So I've been using dandelion flowers that are really cancer fighting and really good for you, as well as little elm seeds uh, that are from the slippery elm. And that's kind of the philosophy behind the food is whatever's in the garden, whatever's of the time, and then whatever we can preserve. I decided to create the Prairie Creek Dinner Series while I was on a plane flying out of Calgary going to Winnipeg and you know when you're up in the air and you're going over the prairies and you see the, the farmlands and you see all the, the rectangles and squares and circles and it's like golden and green and brown depending on what time of year and it's, it's always so beautiful to me so I thought what if I did a dinner series inspired off of this landscape that I'm looking at right now. The main reason behind the Prairie Group Dinner Series was basically just to show everyone across the prairies how interesting and dynamic the region is. We took chefs and artisans from different parts of the prairies, put them together, took them on the road so we could actually show people in the different cities what the prairies are all about. It's called the Prairie Grid Dinner Series from Eat North, a dinner tonight celebrating all things prairie. You have to use the best produce that you can get your hands on and that's going to be something that's local and grown close to you. I really like to do like simple dishes that are, you know, kind of seem like the more, more than the sum of their parts and fresh produce is key to that. I made a salad with Arctic char that we get from Manitoba and I used that with the lentils and we made a salad with it and then grated the fresh horseradish over some herbs that we get from a local farmer as well. And that just adds like warmth and spiciness to the dish, which I think is great for this time of year to kind of like warm you up inside. My entree was uh, venison. I glazed it with a little bit of the birch, almost made a birch caramel. Just taking a dish that isn't in your face, blatant prairies in Alberta, but use every single element that I could to, to make it happen. <laughs> The salad course that I'm doing is a fall panzanella, so it's using some sourdough, some roasted squash, some charred Brussels leaves, a little bit of fermented squash, some goat feta, and then yeah, just some just some great fall ingredients to kind of match the cooling temperatures. My inspiration was the prairie sunset, the prairie skies with all the purple and the orange and the red and pinks. I think that's one of the most beautiful things about Saskatoon and Saskatchewan is and the prairies is just the wide open skies. 
The element to this dinner that really makes it special is that we incorporated different artisans from across the prairies. And when a person sat down for dinner in our event space, they could be eating off of plates that were created in Winnipeg, or they could be sipping a cocktail that was created in Edmonton and Calgary. And I think that that's the thing that really made the Prairie Grid Dinner Series special, was involving these other creative minds in the process and just giving them our baseline inspiration, which was the, the prairie farmscape. We had charcuterie come out for the first course of the dinner. All of the plateware were all these different colors of gold and green and orange that kind of clicked together like a prairie grid. We revealed a prairie grid table runner that was underneath this butcher paper that we had covered up the table with. So we tried to work in an element of art as well in the dinner. One of my favorite things was definitely the dessert. So I told the pastry chefs when they were designing this dessert that I wanted people to feel like they were digging into prairie soil in the middle of the winter. Layers of chocolate cake, ganache, praline nuts, icings infused with Porter's tonic, and then we finish it with a nice whipped cream, which is the snow. And when you spooned into it, it was covered in white icing. Inside, you could see these beautiful layers of different kinds of cake, and it looked like soil layers. So people really liked that effect, and I think it was such a wonderful way to, to end the meal and just remind people that even in the dead of winter, the prairies can be beautiful. The more we collaborate with other chefs, the better, because uh, chefs can really have blinders on and just be uh, in the kitchen, head down, working 16 hours a day, and when we're forced to go out and collaborate with other chefs on things like the Prairie Grid series, it really helps us to um, learn from each other and discover new ingredients together, especially when we're all from the prairies for this particular dinner. It's really interesting. Everybody grows as um, a chef or as even a server as a part of this, from meeting new people to discovering new ingredients to making new friends. The diners that are coming to these dinners say that now they know what's happening in Winnipeg, so they're getting really excited about going to one of Adam's restaurants or trying the culinary scene in Winnipeg, and people from Calgary are excited about coming to Edmonton and coming to Saskatoon, so it's been fantastic for all four cities involved. We're all just kind of working together because we love the city that we live in, and we just want to make it a better place, and we're not like in competition with one another. I've really enjoyed learning and seeing what the other chefs are doing. There's dishes that I've thought about and they are taking it in a completely different direction than I ever would. It's really inspiring, it's really humbling at times as well. Working a dinner series like this through Eat North, whether it's in Winnipeg, Saskatoon, Edmonton or Calgary, we're, we're all working together to make the food scene in the prairies better. Even though we're in, in the middle of nowhere, as people would say, um, in the internet age, I feel like we're really connected into the world food scene. We are just going to get closer and closer to finding out our, our true cuisine and discovering new ingredients and also becoming a destination spot for the rest of the world. I went traveling around the world and I got to cook in Australia and in you know, England and Europe, which was an amazing experience, but I really wanted to come back home and open something, you know, and I love Winnipeg and I love living there and the community that I have. And it's my home and I wanted to bring back, you know, something that was, was really inspired me and really close to me. And I don't know, there's no place like home, right? And uh, it's, that's the prairies to me, is uh, home.